Mac. I'm born f in. I was born in Cal uh, Klamath Falls, Oregon, and raised in Pasco. And can you tell us how you got invited to Hunger Generation? And when you first came, what did you think? I was invited because I was on the verge of shooting myself. Um, I had told my brother Alex. Uh, actually, not my brother, but my best friend. I was. I've gone through a lot since the past 21 years. Um, and then all he told me was to come to church. What could I do? I told him I didn't believe in it because religion has been in my life, you know, since ever. I started off as a Christian, and then I went to Mormonism, and then Catholicism, and then Buddhism, and nothing's ever worked out for me. So I kind of just lost faith, and that's kind of when I just fell in the pit. And Zach, can you tell us, when you first came to the Earth Service, what happened to you? I was overwhelmed. <laughs> Alex told me church, not a concert. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, no, um, when I came, I believe his name was Dan, and um, his, testimony, his testimony really opened up. It opened up my eyes, and it showed that I wasn't the only one. And um, with that being said, I, I don't know why I felt embarrassed, but I had to rush out because I wanted to cry. And so that being said, Alex had took me home, and I, um, and I just sat there, and I kind of took a step back and just reevaluated my life. So why did you leave the service early? What happened when you went home? I cried and then I, like I said, I reevaluated. And then he told me to pray and I didn't know how because this is all new to me. So I wrote it out. I wrote out my frustrations. I wrote it out. I wrote out like what I was struggling with. And, you know, I wrote out like the little things I was, I was struggling with and, you know, what I wanted to fix just to get out the way. And I prayed to him. I was like, if you're out there, give me a sign because, um, Two weeks prior, uh, my car had broken down, so I was walking to work, blistering cold, you know, and I'm already out in the cold for nine hours. So, and then, 10 minutes. So when you wrote it down um, that your car was broken, you frustrated and you wanted God to fix it, yeah. what happened next morning? 10 minutes until the next morning, um, I got out the shower, got ready for work. I was just crossing my fingers. I was like, oh, I hope my car starts, because it is freezing. Next thing you know, one click, my car is up and running. Can you tell us a little bit what your life was like you before you came to church? We know that you went through many religions to find peace and maybe happiness. What else were you into? Gangs, drugs. Um, I was drinking every night. Uh, one of my biggest problems was pill popping. Uh, it, I tried it when I was in ninth grade and it was oxycodone and it progressed it went from one to two a day to two in the morning to two at night to four in the morning to uh, four at night and it progressed to eight a day and then it got to the point where I wanted something stronger why were you pill popping just what I was um, what I went through as a kid uh, I was born as a uh, without a father you know and there was a point in time where I didn't live with my mother and you know, when I moved here, that's when I was introduced to gangs, and those were the only people that welcomed me. So I thought they were my family. You know, I was picking fights, and I was doing all these kinds of things. And it was just a really horrible place. I really didn't see me going anywhere, so that's why I kind of fell into depression. Like, I was scared of the world. I was always cooped up in my room. I couldn't even step out the door. Like, prior to coming to church, I would never stand in front of people. Like, I, was, I would be so nervous and nerve-wracking, and probably like have an asthma attack and anxiety attack and just boot out of here that would that would be the old me and can you tell us when you came here um that wednesday and when you give your life to christ what happened to you my life took a complete 180 it's been brighter days ever since um uh i remember after that week that first time i came i went to go write in my journal again and i didn't even realize that that list i wrote down was completely crossed off <clears throat> and also, one big thing was my hospital bills because um, my mom, uh, she's sick as well, and that's always been one of my struggles and why I fell down into depression. Uh, you know, she would, she had a stroke. She has back surgery. She had a back surgery. She had um, cancer removed, a tumor removed, and um, it was just hard. Uh, so you had a hospital bill. What happened to that bill? And you that's one of the things that you wrote down on the list that frustrating you. What happened then? It's gone. 
$2,500 I don't have to pay. <laughs> you mentioned to me that you had um, one of the issues that you had um, or you were facing was in your relationships. Can you, can you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, you know, I feel like women are men's greatest treasures and you guys need to realize that. So, and then, <clears throat> anyways, um, my girlfriend's parents, you know, they weren't open to the idea. Um, they didn't like it, you know, that's, that's baby girl, that's their treasure. And, um, you know, I tried everything to you know, get on their good side and, you know, they didn't like me. Then after coming to church, praying to God, I wanted his blessing in my relationship. I wanted to move forward with her, you know, because I really loved her. I would do anything for her. So that being said, um, after I said that prayer, like two or three days after, her parents had called her saying that they wanted to meet me. And then so this Monday, we're going to get together and have dinner. And that's like heartwarming. Coolest thing ever. Um, can you tell us what is your advice maybe to people that are watching us or um, here listening to you? What is it that you want to tell them? A prayer or a day makes the pain go away. I promise you, whatever it is, it's nothing God can overcome. It's God's battle, not yours. I promise you that. And with, with God, anything is possible. 